145 miles west of Washington, D.C. lies the town of Edom, West Virginia, an unincorporated community surrounded by the Allegheny Mountains. Edom sits in Green Valley, isolated from the world, but this quiet valley would make communication history. Enter the Edom Earth Station. This four satellite dish array became the world's busiest facility for handling satellite telecommunications traffic by the mid 1970s. Built by the Communications Satellite Corporation, or ComSat, for $6.5 million, the station became operational in 1968. Edom was a downlink for receiving signals from satellites positioned over the US, Atlantic Ocean, and Indian Ocean. The station would be the first to communicate with the latest generations of satellite technology, the Intelsat 3 and 4. Edom being tucked away in the narrow valley with numerous folded mountains to the east provided ideal shelter from radio interference of the big east coast cities. Edom is also located just north of the National Radio Quiet Zone, a 13,000 square mile area established in 1958 where radio transmissions are highly regulated. Edom most notably carried signals and images for NASA's Apollo 11 splashdown. The big swimmer is now spraying the hatch area and the top deck around the hatch on the command module with a decontaminant. Video of major international sporting events such as the 1968 and 72 Olympics. Helped beam an early test of the internet around the world and established a direct line of communication between the U.S. and the Soviet Union to clear up confusion to prevent unnecessary nuclear war. The station wasn't flawless. About 90 times for a minute or more, Edom would go down, totaling around 17 hours a year due to severe weather. To solve this problem, the Lenox Earth Station was built 22 miles northeast near the Maryland border. The Lenox Station included a single 105-foot dish on top of a 35,000-square-foot steel building. During heavy rains, operators would switch the satellite receiving responsibility to Lenox's clearer skies. The signals would then travel 22 miles via microwave to Edom's mountaintop microwave repeater, which bounced the signals down to Edom's Earth Station in the valley below. Heading up the mountain to visit the Edom Repeater Tower just shows you how treacherous these West Virginia mountain roads can be. Also, from a drone's eye view of the repeater, it appears as if the natives looted the site of its valuables many years ago. Fast forwarding to 1988, AT&T bought both stations from ComSat for their downlink capabilities. I assume AT&T always played a vital role in Edom's life since AT&T's infrastructure of cross-country microwave towers called the Long Lines were on the mountains above Edom and Lenox. After 20 years with AT&T and the evolving internet and underwater fiber technology, AT&T put both properties up for sale in 2018. Edom sat vacant for a few years until 2021 when Deep Space Network bought the property for $1.5 Deep Space Network is NASA's international array of giant radio antennas that support their missions. Edom's antennas will be put back into service. Currently, the antennas are getting a fresh coat of white paint. I wonder if SpaceX looked at the property to communicate with their rockets or Starlink satellites. West Virginia is not unfamiliar to sites like this. The mountain state being so isolated and close to Washington, D.C., several more communication sites are currently operational. Remember the National Radio Quiet Zone in the beginning of the video? Well, that zone was created for the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, which constructed a 300-foot steerable radio telescope in 1962. Unfortunately, this radio telescope collapsed in 1988. The Green Bank Telescope replaced it in 2000, and it is the world's largest fully steerable radio telescope at 100 meters. The Green Bank Telescope is of utmost importance for research since its sister telescope in Puerto Rico collapsed on December 1, 2020. These radio telescopes are extremely sensitive to interference, so the strictest regulations in the quiet zone are around the town of Green Bank, West Virginia. Wi-Fi, radio, and cell service is banned in the town. Even the neighboring Snowshoe Ski Resort doesn't get a pass for using unnecessary radio waves that would interfere with Green Bank's observations. The Navy also decided that this quiet zone would be a great location for the Sugar Grove Listening Station, which opened in 1969. 
This secret base had massive antennas to listen for Russian transmissions reflecting from the moon. Sugar Grove could also conveniently eavesdrop on the signals meant for the Edom Earth Station just 58 miles to the northwest. Today, the Sugar Grove listening station is run by the NSA. It is assumed the NSA is intercepting international calls with the larger dishes and tapping into domestic calls with the smaller dishes. Sugar Grove is reportedly a part of the code name Echelon surveillance network of similar intelligence gathering stations around the world. Now back to the west in Fairmont, West Virginia, sits the joint NASA and NOAA backup location. Multiple modern dishes sit along Interstate 79 which communicate with the GEOS weather satellites. A supercomputer on site processes the data. Some of the products produced with the data are infrared and visible satellite images you can access yourself online. If the main geo station in Maryland goes down, then the Fairmont station would take over. I hope this video helped you understand the importance of the mountain state when it comes to telecommunications and space.